How do we respond to people who are causing trouble in our church? And there's a number of different things, and we're not going to hit those to hit a number of those things today. We want to look specifically at what John says today, as he encourages these people to respond, Gaius in particular, to this man Diotrephes, who loves the prominent place in the church. He wants to be the one that's in charge. And he refuses anybody else that might even put his being in charge at risk, number one. And number two, those that would even entertain having anybody else come around, he puts them out of the church. So what do we do? What does John tell them to do? Well, we'll take a look at that today. And we'll see it kind of matches up with, or it does match up with what Paul tells us in other texts. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we've been going verse by verse through 3 John. We come down to 3 John 11 today, in which the Apostle Paul, or excuse me, we have Paul writing a 3 John. John, the Apostle, pardon me, uh, says, Beloved, and he's uh, writing this in the plural. This is very important that he writes that this word beloved in the Greek has is, uh, um, he's looking, pardon me, it's, it's not plural. It's a vocative. How do we respond to people who cause trouble in our churches? Well, there's a number of different texts that address these. We're going to look at one that I think is important for us. Sometimes we forget in the process of handling people that have caused problems. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher. We are working verse by verse through 3 John. And John has been writing to a man by the name of Gaius. Uh, and John rejoices over Gaius. He's rejoiced over the fact that Gaius walks in truth, that Gaius demonstrates love, that Gaius has supported believers and he encourages them to do so. But Gaius has a problem. In the church where Gaius is, there is a man by the name of Diotrephes. Now, I don't, we don't know for sure who Diotrephes is in terms of his position in the church, but there's a good chance that he is uh, an overseer, uh, elder, a pastor, all of those referring to the same office or the same group of people. And this Diotrephes, John said, loves the prominent place. He loves to be the one that's in charge. He likes being the one that decides everything. And yet the function of the church is believers working together. It's not just one person. One person provides leadership, or it could be multiple people. That's not always true that just one person is true in, in a church that one person is in leadership. Multiple people may do that. But as they lead, they always need to be sensitive to what the people in the church things they may contribute in the process and things that they may even con contribute in the sense of correcting, well, the leadership, you're going this, but you've taught us this. So why would we go that direction if you've taught us this? And I've had that happen to me. I've had times where I thought we should do this and then somebody says, well, but you've taught us from this text and this text this. So this doesn't seem consistent and I have to admit you're right. Now, I could stand my ground, and, I could be, and I've known pastors like this that, I'm the Lord's anointed. Don't you challenge me. <laughs> well, we're all anointed, the Lord's anointed because we all have the Holy Spirit as believers. So, John is trying to encourage Gaius on how to respond to this, and he tells him, I'll deal with diatrophies when I come. But he comes to verse 11 now, and he says, Beloved, what a, what a wonderful way to look at Gaius. This brother that has demonstrated love to the saints, and John really appreciates him also, he says, do not imitate what is evil. Now, there could be a stronger word for evil that he uses, but he says, this is just, this is this activity that he's doing, it's just not right. It, it's just, it's not the way it should be. And that's the idea behind this word evil. It's something that's just out of character from what you would expect. He says, don't imitate that, but imitate what is good. And this word good that he uses here, agathos in the Greek, is a word meaning that which makes for the well-being of others. It could be your own well-being, but also for the well-being of others. The one who does good, this one's from God. The one who does evil, 
And we have a, a co combination form of the word do and then that word evil. It's just not the way, the way it should be. This one hasn't seen God. He doesn't say that this person isn't a believer, but he says he doesn't see him. He's just looking at, at, at this condition that this person is in. He says, this person hasn't seen God. If they honestly think that this is okay to act this way in a manner that doesn't fit what God's doing, that person hasn't seen God. Now he says, do not imitate what is evil. You know, Paul talks about this in a couple of passages. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul's very first letter, he says in verse 15, See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for, you notice he says, one another, and for all. In other words, for, other, for one another as believers, but you also ought to be seeking the things that are good, even for the unbelievers. But notice he says here, don't repay evil to evil. In the context, he's really talking about conflicts that go on in the church. And just because one believer doesn't act the way that is that God has planned for us, they do not act inconsistent with the grace of God and the ministry of the Spirit in our lives, doesn't mean that you can say, well, that guy act that way, I'm going to act like that way. Tit for tat. You, got, you did this to me, I'll do this back. No. Don't repay. Don't turn around and repay evil for evil. And this, by the way, the word evil here is the same word that John is using over there in 3 John. It's, it's not the way it should be. The way we should be are people that are working together. We could go back up in this context, and he's talking about what are the things that they do? Live at peace with one another. We urge you, brothers, admonish the unruly, those that are out of order, and encourage those who are faint-hearted or those who have small souls. Help those who are weak, and I would say probably weak in the faith, and be patient with everyone. That's the way that we should be that should be characterized in our life, not repaying evil for evil. Now, in Romans chapter twelve, Paul says something similar, and this is in the context where the chapter begins with the with Paul urging them to present their bodies as living sacrifices for what purpose? For offering a spiritual, uh, for offering the spiritual sacrifice of service, which he's going to talk about in the following context, which has to do with you using your gift. And he mentioned some of the gifts. And all of that comes down to love that you have for other believers. And there's several things he says under the, the heading of love. But he comes down here to verse 17. He says, and, and never, or do not ever pay evil for evil. Don't pay it back to anyone. There's no reason to that. But rather, in this word that it means to respect, literally means to take your mind ahead of time and focus it on what is, and we have this word right, but it's, the one word, it's a word for good that means beautiful or noticeably good. You need to plan ahead of time the things that other people can really appreciate. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men and never take your own revenge, beloved but leave room for the wrath of God. Let God deal with those problems. And I think when you bring wrath in, he's indicating that sometimes that's going to be unbelievers because believers are never the objects of the wrath of God. But sometimes there are believers that causes unbelievers that causes problems. But there's also believers sometimes that are going to act in evil towards us. And we don't pay that back. We think about what other people can actually recognize in the conduct and the way we interact with other believers and recognize that. And I never want you to underestimate, I think and scripture would bear this out, how much the world is watching our conduct as believers with each other. Our conduct about loving other believers, laying down our lives for other believers, serving others, other believers. And you would be surprised how people out there in the world see that. And we don't have to go, we don't have to photograph it. We don't have to put it up on social media. We don't have to parade it around town and tell everybody we did this thing. You just serve, and there will be people in whose lives God is working, and they will notice it, and God will use that to get their attention. So you do these things as God planned. Ephesians chapter 4. Paul says here, and again, this is in the context where there's conflict between Jewish and Gentile believers. He says, let no unwholesome word go out of your mouth. That word unwholesome is, is words that are kind of rotten at their core, 
words that are meant to dig, whether other people appreciate it or get what you're doing or not. Uh, don't let those proceed out of your mouth, but only such a, such a word is as good for the edification or the building up of others according to the need in that moment, so that it will give, notice this, minister grace to those who hear. Demetrius, excuse me, um, Diotrephes, Demetrius is the person we're going to come to in the next statement, but Diotrephes has not been acting well in this church. He's been mean to people. He's been hostile. He's been dictatorial. John tells Gaius, don't turn around and do that to anybody else, and don't, don't even do it to him. Don't even come back and use the same kind of language he used against others. Don't, don't turn around and go do that. Rather, you know what? Do the thing that's good in this situation. You just need to be encouraging believers in doing what's right. In fact, I, I often think sometimes when you have a, a, a pastor as an example that becomes dictatorial and the people start to notice Christians sometimes are just kind of crazy in that we, we are afraid to even challenge leadership. But we need to hold leadership. I need the people in my church to hold me responsible. And I think the other people that lead and teach in our church, they also expect people to hold them responsible. And I think some of those people, I don't need to think we need to have all kinds of revolts in churches, but sometimes I think if, if, if the church would step up and they would say, listen, this is not the way it's done. And they were these other people were to step up and do this, just kindly saying, listen, we want you to lead us. You've been leading us, but lead us right and stop being the boss. There's two things, one of two things is probably going to happen. Either the man is going to be convicted by what, what these people are saying and change the way he thinks, or this man's going to take a hike and the church will move on and they'll do better with leadership that, well, hopefully will lead them properly. But they're not being mean in the process. They're not acting like he is. They're acting out of love to try to do what's better for him, but also for the rest of the church. I hope that that helps us think a little bit about how this works, how we as believers need to be operating among ourselves with our churches with our leadership, and being those that don't imitate evil for evil, but rather good. <laughs> I said, don't imitate evil for evil. Don't imitate evil. I was, thinking, I was confusing it with the other text that you don't repay evil for evil, but rather be doing those that are good, demonstrating that God's also not just concerned about love, but he's also concerned about our sense of well-being. And we can be used in promoting that Think about that, where you are with the believers there. And if you're going, I, I hope you're not going through a situation like this where you are, but if you are, well, this is something very practical about the way you interact with each other. As always, have a great day in the Lord, and thank you for joining me.